I'm perfectly happy alone. That is the story that I hear as a dating and relationship coach for women all the time. I'm perfectly happy alone. I love my life. I love being single. I love to travel. I love my friends. I love my pets. I love my freedom. I love not being accountable to anybody. I love my work and my hobbies and my passions. And by the way, I'm not going to tell you that you don't love any of those things. What I will do right now is call complete bullshit on the idea that you'd rather be alone than in love. Now, this is something that's permeated the culture for a long period of time. This idea that it's better to be alone or better to not admit that you have feelings or longings for the idea, uh, ideas of partnership. And the problem is you're not just lying to your friends about how much you want to be in love. You're lying to yourself. You're convincing yourself that you'd be happier alone for the rest of your life than to be loved and cherished and taken care of. And so we got to put an end to that right now because you're really capping your own happiness in life. Harvard did a longitudinal study that lasted for 84 years. You could Google it. It's true. Happiness is love full stop. That was their conclusion. I could cite a study that talks about how happily married couples are the happiest people in the world. People who report that they are very happy, twice as many people who are married report that they are very happy than single people. We're not even talking about something that's debatable. All you have to do is ask yourself if you looked at the situation and said, hey, am I perfectly content being alone for the rest of my life, going out to dinner by myself, traveling by myself? going to sleep by myself, having no one to talk to at the end of a hard day. How did we get here? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. If you have had a series of terrible relationships or dissatisfying relationships or dis disappointing relationships, relationships that ended, relationships where you felt unseen, relationships where you felt unheard, relationships where you were abused or neglected or criticized or insulted. And that describes relationships to you. If relationships equal pain to you, then you've drawn a conclusion. Well, I'd rather be alone than be in a relationship. And that's perfectly logical. Of course, you'd rather be alone than in a relationship if relationships equal pain. But what I'm trying to suggest is that just because your history has been relationships equal pain, doesn't mean that defines relationships, doesn't mean it defines marriage. Not at all. <laughs> I know. That's like saying I'd rather be homeless than be in a house that has a leaky roof from time to time. That, that, that's not true. No one would say that. And I, I would rather be unemployed than have a, have, have a job. That's, that's not true. You'd rather be unemployed for a brief period of time than to have a job that you hate, but under the idea that you're eventually going to get a job that you like a lot better. That's a really better comparison. So when we tell ourselves this story that I don't want to be in a relationship. That is born out of fear. That is born out of pain. That is not born out of abundance or possibility of what's out there. Right? Talk to any happily married couple. And if you don't know any, you should probably get to know some. We exist. Now, again, I want to acknowledge what's wrong with this picture. Lots of people are in bad relationships. I've read a statistic that says two thirds of people in, in marriages are not happy. That's, let's say that's true. That just means that those people either shouldn't have been married or should be divorced. That says nothing about the nature of marriage itself. Right? That's someone who made a bad decision and just doubled down on a bad decision. Right? And then after that bad decision, they've come to this conclusion that, oh, marriage is terrible. Over 50% of women who get divorced don't want to get remarried again. Right? Two thirds of divorces are initiated by women because a lot of men are terrible partners. So then they come to this false conclusion. I don't want to be married again. Here, here's how we're going to get through that. And let's say I'm, I'm going to play God for a second. I can make anything happen. I'm going to send you a man. And that man guaranteed is going to make you happy for the rest of your life. Sickness and health for richer or for poorer till death do you part. This guy is going to be the rock of your life, the foundation upon which you build everything. He's going to be by your side and you're going to grow old together. You're going to be that cute little couple in the park. You're going to be holding hands and you're going to die peacefully in your sleep when you're in your 90s. Right, that's your husband. And I just gave him to you. Do you turn that down? Does anybody turn that down? Is there anybody in the world who wouldn't want that? And there's probably a couple people in the world. That's not the point. That's the exception rather than the rule. But if I could really say, you could have that, would you rather say, nope, would rather be alone? No, you can't. So if that's a possibility and you're anchoring yourself here, we have to talk. We have to get past that. 
because you're limiting your life. I wrote something once upon a time. I'll do it for you here. All right, it's a, it's a really simple, cheap visual. If you're unhappy being single, well, that's, that's challenging. Yes, you should be happy with your single life. Yes, you should fill it up with things that you love and people you love and stuff that gives you meaning and purpose outside of a relationship. That's true, All right? So there's unhappily single, and then there's unhappy in a relationship, unhappily married, unhappily dating, right? There's, that's down here. These are the, the states that we don't want to be in. So then you get out of your bad relationship, and now where do you go? You're here. You're happily single. You built a life that you're proud of. You do enjoy your independence and freedom and hobbies and passions and work and pets and travel. Right? That's better than this. That's right. But what's up here? This is happily married. This is happy in a relationship. Right? So you're kind of just reaching your ceiling when you say, I'm fine being alone. I love it. No, you love it in comparison to being in a miserable relationship. You don't love it in comparison to having someone who makes you breakfast on Sunday morning, who gives you toe-curling orgasms. You don't love it in comparison with having a guy to, to snuggle with every night or to make you laugh or to be with you when your father dies. Like, please. So if this video is triggering or challenging, I encourage you to inquire further with this hypothetical, that if I handed you a partner who made you happy for the rest of your life, would you really turn it down? And if the answer is no, you wouldn't turn it down. Are you really happier being alone than being in love? I don't think so. And I think you need to stop telling that story to yourself and telling that story to others. When I interview clients who come to me for dating and relationship coaching in my course, Love You, I ask them, why do you want a partner? How does it feel to be alone? What would it be like if you found someone who took care of you for the first time in your life, really took care of you and loved you unconditionally? You know what about half the women tell me when, they, when we have this conversation? They tell me, I'd feel complete. And then after they say, I'd feel complete if I had that, they almost cover up their mouths as if it was so wrong and so embarrassing to admit that they feel incomplete without a partner, without a witness to go through their life. Like it's a, a mark of shame. Like they have to turn in their feminist card if they admit that they'd be happier if they were in love. That is what I'm railing against today. Not that you can't be happy single. Of course you could be happy being single. Go ahead, right? But please don't give up on the possibility of love. Don't give up on the possibility that there's more to life than work and travel and being single and your hobbies and your pets. This should not be a controversial point. I know this is controversial, but it shouldn't be a controversial point any more than it's controversial to say, I'd rather have a job that I love where I'm well compensated, or I'd rather have a home that I love than to be living in a cardboard box on the street. I'd rather have a partner who takes care of me and loves me unconditionally isn't a controversial statement. The question is, why don't you have it and what are you doing about it? My name is Evan Mark Katz. I'm a dating coach for smart, strong, successful women. And I challenge you to push through this narrative that you're more happy being alone than you are being in love. You're not, so stop believing it and do something different to get a different result. Thanks.